Hello guys, and today we're gonna talk about the principle of two weaknesses. This principle is very universal and is used in different types of positions. Let's assume that during the game your opponent got some weakness but is able to easily protect it. In this case, it is necessary to create another weakness, preferably as far as possible from the first one, as a rule on the, on the other side of the board. Necessity to protect two weaknesses at the same time, especially remote ones, appears to be a much more complicated task, and often it is not even possible to do that. Especially important to remember that in this context, weakness is not only weak pawn or specific square, but everything that opponent might need to protect and or fight against. Thus, badly positioned opponent's king, open line which can be used by us to invade into opponent's camp, as well as passed pawn, all that is considered as opponent's weakness. Let me show you an example of this principle. On the screen you can see a game from 1915 that was played in Moscow between Zubarev and Alexandrov. In this position we can see that pawns on b6, uh, sorry, squares b6 and d6 are obviously weak because they are protected or can be protected only by black king. Um, however, they are located so close to each other that black king can easily protect them from the same cell standing still on c7 so these are not too big weaknesses at the moment additional attention requires also a6 pawn uh, however currently it is protected by bishop on c8 so this is potential weakness but at the moment it is easily protected and it's worth mentioning that in some cases pawn e6 can uh, get into trouble as well however at the moment it is protected by the same bishop on c8 and no one really attacks this pawn so it is potential weakness uh, worth mentioning that in this situation current situation zugzwang is not even um, is not an option uh, by saying Sukswang, I mean that would force black king uh, or uh, bishop to leave their squares uh, because black bishop can easily go back and forth between squares b7 and c8 protecting pawn on a6 and this is the only attacked pawn at the moment and black king will stand still so let's take a look how the game actually developed in the real real life when they played this game. So white played on knight on d3, bishop d7 for black. Then if instead of bishop d7, black would play g5, then white would play knight f2 trying to get to this to sell g4 and then f6 attacking pawn on h7 and creating more weaknesses that that's our target so on h5 in this situation knight white would play knight h3 attacking pawn on g5 and actually the only move that protects this pawn is to move it forward to g4 but then white knight jumps to on, on f4 attacking pawn on h5 and no one can really protect this pawn because black bishop is too far away from this pawn and this is actually the end of the game because without taking this pawn white can easily take this pawn next and there are two pass pawns remote pass pawns which are unstoppable unstoppable in this case if after knight f2 black play bishop d7 then knight h3 attacking pawn on g5, h6 protecting, knight f2, bishop e8, knight g4, that's where we wanted to get, uh, attacking also pawn on h6, h5, and here, um, here actually white 
play b knight f2 trying to get to h3 and attack pawn on g5 so bishop f7 knight h3 as we see as we saw g4 because that's the only move that protects the pawn knight g5 bishop g8 because if uh, black would move to e8 white would take this pawn and this is the the end of the game basically and b4 and actually now we can see that this is Zugzwang because the only two cells where black bishop can go is f7 and the h7 and both of these cells sorry both of these cells are attacked or protected by white knight that means that black is forced to move king and if king moves to b7 then white king goes to d6 and there are two attacks on pawn e6 and only one protection so this pawn on e6 dies and this is basically the end of the game again if black king moves to d7 then white king moves to b6 eating all the pawns there and this is the end of the game again so let's get back to the main line so the second move after knight d3 it was bishop d7 knight f4 trying to get to an h5 attacking pawn on g6 so creating difficulties uh, difficulties and weaknesses at the same time g6 protecting cell on the square on uh, h5 knight h3 trying to jump on g5 attacking h7 we we've seen these ideas in previous example so white tries to do the same stuff just from different angles trying to avoid all these protections from black h6 protecting this square knight f4 attacking g6 and attacking e6 we mentioned that e6 was a potential weakness so now black is forced to protect two pounds at the same time and while e6 pawn is protected by bishop pawn on g6 is not protected and if black would move bishop to protect it then white would eat pawn on e6 so the only move is g5 then knight h5 uh, yes bishop e8 knight f6 bishop f7 knight g4 attacking pawn on h6 h5 the only move knight e3 bishop d6 h4 and actually h4 is a very strong move and let's see if black wouldn't take it on g4 then they are forced to play g4 sorry on h4 then they are forced to play g4 and then knight goes to g2 bishop moves somewhere for example on e8 then knight f4 and now knight attacks two pawns on h5 and e6 and the only cell from where black can protect both of these pawns without moving king is bishop f7 and white plays b4 causing Sukhswang and now if black move bishop somewhere from the cell square f7 white takes either this pawn on h5 or on e6 and this is the end of the game or that means that black is forced to move king and we've seen if king goes to b7 then white king king goes to d6 if king moves to d7 white king moves to b6 eating all the pawns so black needed to take the pawn on h4 pawn g takes h4 as well for white bishop e4 protecting swell on d2 so uh, white knight couldn't jump like this attacking both of these pawns knight f1 bishop f3 knight d2 bishop e2 knight b3 
bishop g4, knight d4, attacking on e6. We managed. Uh, we mentioned that this is a potential weakness. Knight h3 protecting this pawn. Otherwise, they black would need to move king. Knight e2, bishop f5, knight f4. Again, that's what what we wanted. We attack both pawns on e6 and h5 at the same time. And bishop g4 and b4. And this is Sukspang again. Because square g4 is the only square at the moment from where bishop, black bishop, can protect both of these pawns. That, and both of them are attacked by white knight. So now again black is forced to move their king and we know what will happen afterwards. So if king here, excuse me, here, then white king here eating these pawns. If king here, then white king on d6 eating this pawn and this pawn with, with the help of white knight. And this is the end of the game because we have a passed pawn and we can easily eat all the other pawns for white. And then king d7 because black were forced to. King b6, bishop f3, king takes a6, queen c6, and knight, knight takes e6, and black resigned. So this is actually a very good example how you can create a second or third or any other weakness for your opponent. Just try practicing this uh, principle during your games and you will see that the quality of your games really improves. Thank you for watching.